Hi, this is Harish here. Welcome to DB2 TSA MP tutorial part 3. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about setting up of instances and HDR databases. The free, uh, the, the scripts that I'm using, the files, the data, data files that I'm using are freely available for download at db 2 lwacademyblogspotin Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash db 2 lwacademy Okay, this talks about the overview and the tasks that we are going to perform in tutorial 3. The overview is in tutorial 1, we have installed DB2 product and TSA on primary server, which is our, the machine name is Tiger, it's a Red Hat system. And in tutorial 2, we have installed the same, like the, the DB2 and TSA on standby server. The server machine name is Dragon, again the same thing. So, the software versions are all same, 11.1.4.4 DB2. Um, RHEL 7.6 and the tasks in tutorial 3 is we want to create instances we installed only the product on both the machines uh, we never created the instances so we are going to create instances and database we are going to create one HA database high availability database and make it uh, HADR like that uh, still the TSA component automation is not going to be there uh, using the high utility we have to do that but that mostly we will do that in tutorial 4 um, yes, so we are creating instances, databases and configuring HDR between Tiger and Dragon, the, between primary and our uh, standby server. And uh, one thing we are going to do is instance creation using response file. So everybody knows about the db2 icrt command for creation of instances, which involves a lot of other manual user creations and other things from the OS side. So, so I'm not just demonstrating that, uh, that kind of a method, but I'm just still I'm going to do command line. Uh, so without any GUI, but it will be using the response file. So we have we have installed the TSA DB2 product itself using uh, response files. So in the same way, we can do instance creation also. We can do using response files. So I thought that will be a good thing to to show. You know. Okay. So without much uh, delay, we'll go to the uh, we'll go to the tasks. So first, instance creation needs to be done using response files. So for that. We'll go to the primary machine first, which is the Tiger server. So here we'll have to obviously open up a terminal. So let me get into full screen. Okay. So we'll open a terminal. Uh, we'll go in. We'll go in as root user. We'll go to the location where we installed the DB2. and instance folder so there if you look there is a executable db2 i setup so which is like db2 instance setup so we can use that i setup so this will bring up a instance creation gui for us so obviously we we will generate a response file we will not create the instance using this i setup utility the i setup utility can be used to create instances in a gui mode uh, but we are not going to do that. So what I'm going to do instead is opt for the command line way of doing things. So I'm just going to show that to you. And the advantage is if I have this instance creation setting in a response file, why I'm choosing that way, I, I'll just try to explain in the meantime. Because if I have all these instance settings and instance creation details in the response file, I can just take that response file, copy that over uh, to the uh, standby server and create the instance there also in one simple way. So that way there is very less um, manual thing intervention that is required and uh, you know you, you can easily replicate the things so that that is the uh, thing okay. So okay next so we we want to create a db2 instance it, it says like that but uh, uh, we will not create the instance but uh, we'll just generate the response file. You can see it at the end of the screen. So single partition instance obviously and um, the username is inst1 and instead of the default uid we'll use something like 1010 so we, so whenever we use uh, user ids like this we have to make sure that uh, let's open up a terminal so because that user id should not be used by any other uh, uh, system users right so etc password so you can just run that um, you can see there is no user um, so there is only one user RHEL with the user ID 1000. So if you if you want, you can also type something like um, cat pipe grep hyphen i uh, 1010. So nothing is there actually. 
so with uh, with one zero as output you can see only uh, there is a group 100 there is a group 1 or 7 there is a user id and gid 1000 so 1010 is pretty much unused and 1011 obviously is also pretty much unused similar way we can do for the group file also so etc group so you can say like uh, I, I, I think I'll be using 140 like that and or 141 so in etc group also uh, there is no uh, no user like that you can see that no groups like that there is a RHEL group with group ID 1000 so which uh, any case we are not uh, that's an existing thing we are not using that anyways so 1010 and the uh, uh, group name is IADM and we'll be using like 140 the password and the home folder so everything is uh, given all the details are correct okay next and same thing fence one so you will use 1011 FADM will be the group uh, thing and uh, 141 will be the group ID password home folder uh, yeah uh, then so yeah this is another thing that you should be aware of so whenever we are using this TCP IP configuration we have to go and check um, whether that service is used whether that port numbers are used by any other services like that so we'll go here more etc or else I can say like cat etc services so you can see it's there is there are a lot of services and uh, what are all the port numbers that are getting used so we'll just grep for db2 service um there is uh, db2 services that are running these are for the tsa uh, for the i think this 523 is getting used by the tsa component uh, other things i don't know so maybe we'll not worry about it but um but any any case 50000 is not getting used see that that's the uh, important thing that we came here for that that's why we came here that is the exact thing that we need here uh, we want to check that okay and i do not want to auto start the instance because uh, tsamp will automatically once the high availability is configured the auto starting will happen by the tsa itself so we don't want to do do explicitly set anything along those lines okay next so this gives you a nice summary of uh, what are all the things that we have chosen uh, hopefully everything is uh, fine and uh, another important thing is see this is the one so if i say finish now I, obviously it's going to perform the instance setup and uh, uh, save the settings in a response file rather i will be saving my settings in a response file without any installing any so software so i'll be choosing the location home slash rhel sorry rhel so in that I'll be setting up as db2 i setup that's the utility right so db2 i setup instance setup dot rsp so I'll say finish done so it should have um, it should have generated or it should have created a file so I'll open a new window db2 i setup response file so I'll, I can even show the contents db2 i setup dot rsp so you can see that it's a very simple file it's again a text based file uh, the location of the uh, in db2 uh, where it is installed and this is the instance uh, related properties this is the instance name the user id the gid the um, group name home folder the password and this uh, uh, service name the port numbers everything is there for the fenced user uh, information is also there so it's a very simple and neat uh, response file so after that what we'll do uh, we, we now have the response file we'll go to that location uh, oh no uh, I have to execute under the root only I have to execute the instance creation so I'll be running the same db2 i setup utility uh, but okay for example like this um, iPhone H which means it, it's going to provide so this is the option we should use due to i setup iphone or response file name so if we give the response file name that's enough so it will pick up so db2 i setup hyphen r the response file is located at home rhel db2 i setup dot rsp that's it so it's all command line only i'm i'm still using command gui but you can do it from a putty session also it, it should work the same way 
So let's run that. And we have made sure that all the users and uh, the, obviously there are no users with that same UID. There are no uh, services that are using the, that port number. So we have pretty much made sure of that, uh, all those things we have taken care. The same thing needs to be done on the um, secondary or the standby server as well. So the standby server is Dragon. So we'll have to do that. Okay, now if I have to send this, uh, send this, uh, what is called? Hmm. If I have to send this response file uh, to the other server, so from the tiger to, from tiger server, I have to send it to dragon server, right? Okay, so everything got completed successfully. We'll, in any case, we'll just have a look at, uh, just for the sake of uh, uh, confirmation, we'll look at the log file. So these are all the instances and everything is a success. So th this is the most important thing, like the success, success, instance one has created successfully, the CFG value has been set, auto start is no, and blah, 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 blah. Okay, so it's all uh, set up and uh, hopefully everything is working because no errors, at least in this case. Um, what else? Okay, now what we need to do is go to that location uh, I think you can exit from root, so you don't need root privileges as of now. So you can come back and and I need to send this db to isetup.rsp. I need to send this response file to the standby server so that I can do the same instance creation over there as well. So for that, I'll be using the SCP thing. So before using the SCP, what I'll do, I'll say sudo nano etc hosts so what i'll do is i'll i'll add the uh, server here so if i go to here 192.168.91.104 so that will be uh, dragon d r a g o n tab d r a g o n enter control x shift s enter so that way what will happen is if i say ping dragon it should be able to ping, right? So I'm just setting up the host name. And in any case, this is required when we do for HDR setup. So they should be ping, pingable. Again, in real time, this might not work. Uh, some firewalls might be preventing it. So, uh, so that I'm not considering the enterprise setup here. So this for our for our home network. Okay. So the instance creation is done. Mm, what else needs to be done? The ping, the host name is all added. Um, then I can uh, copy. Yeah, I can, I can, I can copy that. So how do I copy that file? Is like this. You can use the SCP command from the command line itself. You can do that. So this is the command. Okay. So SCP, the source file name. Source file name is db2 i setup dot rsp. That's the source file name. And the username uh, is R E D H A T. The red hat is the username at the server dragon. The location would be home folder, obviously. So home slash red hat. Okay. Um. Yeah, you can just say yes, and. Uh, It's adding some security key and other things. So I don't know why it is taking such a long time. Okay, now it is asking the password. So I can give the password. Then the transfer will start and oh, done. The transfer is done actually. It's so fast. So, um, so once the transfer is done, we have to go and check that in the Dragon server. So this is the Dragon server. But I'm not using going to use the GUI for the Dragon server. I have connected to the Dragon server as a root user here. So if I if I run here, see the db2 i setup rsp came here. So this is the one we transferred from the other location. So you can see that all the same details are there. And here also I can go ahead and check the same things. Like for example, cat um, etc services and uh, pipe grep i db2 
uh so 50000 is not getting used 60000 is not getting used so all the ports are uh, available for free like is there and the next thing would be the groups etc group group uh, nothing is going to be there with the name db2 and uh, etc password p a s s w d so uh, see because it's a new machine right so these things are not going to be there but if it, if there is an existing machine and there are multiple instances then it's always better to check that because you don't want conflicting uids right so we, we i mean obviously we cannot create two instances with the same username or different username with different gids so that the, those kind of conflicts will come so it's it's uh, it's better to take care of that so yeah and another thing i'll do is probably what i'll do i'll say sudo nano i'll add uh, like i i'm not able to ping to the tiger machine from here right so okay i don't need sudo so i'll just say nano slash etc slash uh hosts h o s t s this is at this point it is not required but it's always better to have that right see here that's what i am saying so 192.168.91 because for hcd or any case it is required so 103 so we'll be adding tiger here tab t a g e r tiger okay control x shift s enter okay so that's done so i should be able to ping to tiger absolutely so i'm just able to ping that okay now the next thing we'll do is what is that we'll do yeah we'll have we'll have to run the i setup right so for that you need to run the db2 i setup utility so we have to go to cd opt ibm db2 v star slash instanc and dot forward slash db2 i setup hyphen r the location is home red hat db2 i setup dot r s p okay uh yeah and i am under root so root user only you can create the instances so let's see that how long it takes for that instance creation okay it's going to take a while so again we'll go look at that so we have created instances okay then we have to create the database okay i think it's going to be a lengthy video as usual uh, but uh, all these other things should be like really fast it should not take that much of time except for the create database obviously the create database is going to take a little bit of more time and these things can be done like like it's just going to be a copy paste of the command hopefully i should be able to complete all the activities in a timely manner and my battery should last oh my god it's only saying 40 minutes um another 10 or 15 minutes i think we should be done here so let's see okay the execution completed successfully without any issues so we'll go there and uh, we'll just check yep 60000 auto uh, auto start of the instance is not there the cfg files are updated and uh, everything is there so it's all pretty much looks really really decent and uh, there is nothing to worry about as of now i don't see anything to worry about um what else is there what else is there okay i think uh, so this is on the standby server so now i have to go to the primary server and create the database which is like a big thing okay it's going to big thing in the sense like it's going to take a little bit of time uh okay so i can log out and i can come back in as the the user db2 inst1 um let's check that or i could use a putty session as well so i i don't know i just should have done that but okay db2 inst1 Okay, I'm using <laughs> all the same username and password, but it's just for my learning purpose. But don't do that. I don't know. I'm just saying that. Oh, everybody knows that. So I'm just. I have to say something to pass time <laughs> until the the GUI comes up, until this whole thing comes up. So, so this is again going to be another maybe another twenty twenty five minutes video. So please bear with me and uh, let's go and look at. 
so we have started okay we have to start the instance first so before that we'll run certain db2 commands and just make sure that everything is set up properly uh okay and uh, it is raining i hope you are picking up the rain nice <laughs> i am not sure so let's look at the db2 i list yes it is uh, showing so oops something is showing okay next next uh, location so is off next skip uh, start using the data enterprise server okay so now what i'll do oh god it's okay now i'll say db2 start so I obviously i need to start the instance to create the database um, hopefully if everything has been done properly it should start without any issues without any errors like that and um, we are using the trial version so yep so everything started in a very graceful manner okay db2 create uh, create uh, what is that create db ha db so that's the database uh, we'll create so that's a default uh, command nothing new create db with all default settings like that and we'll also make a directory arch underscore logs so obviously we need to enable archival logging for um, for uh, for the HDR database, uh, so HDR obviously can be configured only on that. So, make directory arch underscore logs, which will be used for as the archival directory, and also uh, we'll try to yeah we'll try to ping uh, dragon from here. Yep, dragon is pinging, and we'll also say SCP. Like I have to. Okay, I think I'll do it once the backup file is there. So, so because what I'm trying to do is once the database creation is done and archival is everything is done configured, I have to take a backup of this database. Okay, let's go here. I have to take a backup of this database and I have to restore that onto the standby machine. So for transferring that backup image, I'll be again using the same command, uh, SCP command, which we we'll, which we used for. Uh, which we used for uh, the i setup, right? So we'll do that. I think only uh, only these things are going to be really, really slow and it's going to take some crazy amount of time. But uh, after that, the HDR setup is just going to be like real fast, I guess, uh, you know, hopefully. Um, uh, or else, I mean, yeah, create database is done. Or I could have just uh, split this further into a uh, small video like you know i should have shown only instance creation but that's okay so we'll we'll just please bear with me so update uh, this thing okay and then backup so copy that and uh, paste that here backup so i am an instance user so db2 instance owner i mean db2 user now uh, so you can see the backup image is there so now we'll use the same command scp command again to transfer this backup image to the standby machine okay so let me just clear that and paste so scp hadb okay so that's the source file name and the username would be uh, db2 inst1 so because uh, the destination uh, server which is dragon that is also having the same user and the home folder so home db2 inst1 as it enter mm, okay yes um db2 inst1 okay 35 mb 56 mb i think it should be roughly 100 120 mb like that 120 yeah 140 mb okay so the transfer is done why oh, am i having two windows here okay i can exit this um, so after taking backup we have um, after taking backup we have copied this to the standby server and we'll go to the standby server we have given the host entry already we have added the machine name and ip address so we'll have to restore the database onto the standby server so we'll come to standby so here obviously i am in root which is uh, not required oh my goodness i just closed it putty session uh, dragon server so i'll be logging in sdb2 inst1 
This is taking a lot of time. I don't know why. So something maybe to do with network. Hmm. Okay, DB2 INST1 and LS. So you can see that the backup image, uh, what is that? The, the thing is there. And um, I don't know why it is not showing me other uh, files like documents and all that thing, but that's okay. So DB2 iList. So we just want to check. Yep. Yeah. So DB2 start. So on the standby server, we are now in the standby server in the command line, like the in the putty session. Um, so let's just uh, do that. Okay. Okay. Started successfully. Now I'll say db2 restore db db name hadb. The location is the the same. So nothing I need to do. Just a simple command. That's it. So. We have seen that. Yep. So after that, in the standby server itself, once the database is uh, restored, it will be in the roll forward pending state. After that, I have to update the HDR parameters. And uh, see, the HDR parameters are pretty much standard. So this is your local machine, which will be the standby machine. And this is the HDR port number. This is the remote machine, which is the primary. And this will be that port number, instance name. And uh, remote machine colon port number and peer window is all is all standard parameters only there is nothing new so we can just copy all these things do that in like one yep so the restore is done and uh, i could just paste all the parameters here update db hadb using this successful um i don't know why does it say twice but uh, i don't know Maybe something. So uh, update DB. Yeah, everything got updated successfully. Then all I have to do is start the database in a standby mode. Ah, critical thing, critical thing. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, the battery, battery is going down. We should be able to pull it off. taking a little bit of time I told you already it's not a very powerful machine okay hmm. yep so the standby has started you can see okay we'll We'll just leave it. We'll not check the status as of now. So the standby part is done. Now we have to do the primary part. So primary part, again, all the commands are here. You can see that. So copy all that and go to your uh, primary server, which is the tiger server. And uh, we can just paste that here. Yeah. Perfect. Everything got updated and start it as primary. Copy that. Come on, come on. I am on low battery. Please don't shut down. It should not, it should not shut down. It's not, it's a very dangerous thing because with virtual machines, you know, the VM can get corrupted. So I might have to reinstall the RHEL itself. That's really a bad thing. That would be like a very bad thing. I should have started with a little more juice in my battery, but uh, hopefully we are in the, almost we are in the last step. Okay, I'll just copy the next command and keep it ready. We need to check the status. That's it. So it should be in peer state. It's it's very simple thing. Yep, HDR has started in the primary also, standby also, and we can check the HDR status of the database. So you can see here, uh, primary, near sync, peer state, uh, primary is tiger and the standby is a dragon and it's connected it's in peer state amazing this is what um, this is what is a simple hadr configuration and here also i think we can run the same command hadb status and here it should say like it is a standby server near sync peer 
connected dragon is the standby primary is the tiger machine so we are all set standby is all done primary is all done hdr is set up is done instance creation is done that's amazing right that's it that's what we set to do and always deactivate your so db2 deactivate db db name hadb deactivate your primary first and then you can stop the instance and you can deactivate standby after that uh, and then stop so the next time so this tutorial i'm not doing haiku configuration the hdr setup is done the instance creation is done everything is done the database is all up and running in hdr peer state this is what we wanted to do for this tutorial and we have done that so uh, i'll see you in the next video wherein we'll be configuring a haiku between uh, automating the hdr with haiku haiku utility the tsa automation we'll see that okay um that's it in this video tutorial thank you see you in the next video tutorial until then bye bye